Hey, good morning, everybody. It is great to be back with you all for the morning briefing here on Friedman Adventures. It is absolutely pristine, gorgeous. I'm going to run out of adjectives. All you got to do is look back there. It looks calm. It looks beautiful. It's perfect for surf fishing. And we are going to get a little break in the weather. So boats are already fishing bluefin tuna down south. Channel Island boats, it sounds like those guys are going to get out and give it a try. Some of them did yesterday. We'll talk about how they did. And of course, we've got some great stuff on the horizon for each and every one of you. Some wonderful events that we would love you to participate in. I was down there at Island Fishing Tackle in Carson. Man, it was great to see so many wonderful friends once again. I met Fred. I saw Jody. Of course, Sam and his entire crew. It's always great to see them and so many others. Always fun to get out and meet and talk to the great anglers we have here in Southern California. Mike Stout is one of those great anglers. He hasn't been feeling 100% lately, so I want to send him all my very, very best. Mike's a great guy. He's getting better all the time, and we send him all of our blessings for a speedy recovery. Mike, just keep getting better. All right, Let's jump into a lot of different stuff. I'll remind you all that we are having a raffle on this Sunday. We have that special event. Remember the casting event? You know, you're going to be able to look at different types of setups, pick them up, feel them, see if they feel right to you, talk to some experts like Sam De La Torre and his whole crew from Island Fishing Tackle. Also on hand, the guys from the 540 Slingers Club who have a passion for throwing the iron. Jeff Yeomans and Danny and so many others will be there to help you through and to see what it is exactly would fit perfect with you and give you some instruction and help you on your way. And of course, we'll have subsequent classes where you're going to be able to make a cast and watch your jig swim. It's going to be great. And then the after party, of course, will be down at Shoulbs in Long Beach. It's on 4th Street. It's really close. You got to come by for a cold beer, a hot cup of coffee, something to eat, and you know what? You're not bugging me if you do this. I've got in my pocket some free chips that'll get you a free beer or a soft drink if you're a kid or a cup of coffee if you're like me. So hit me up. Say, Phil, before I run out of those things on Sunday, when you see me, say, hey, I'm going to Shoals. I want one of those little beautiful free drink tokens, and I'll be sure and give it to you while they last. I think I have like 50 of them, so don't let me forget, make sure you ask me. The raffle is for Italica 20. They are hard to come by right now. And Israel de la Cruz is the guy responsible for donating it. Israel saw our efforts down in Mexico. We've been doing a lot down there to help the people, thanks to you. I mean, I am just Santa Claus. You guys are the ones who donate so much clothing and so many goods. And when we do raffles like this, we're able to go down and feed hotel workers in two hotels and we're really hurting here recently in Rosarito and in Playas de Tijuana with the help of my friend Gerardo Delgado down there in Mexico and so and in Cabo San Lucas when we took all those skateboards down there and literally thousands of gifts that we handed out clothing jackets and so much more and this is going to help us ship down even more and I'm thinking as crazy as my schedule is right now this is probably going to be a Christmas giveaway, but we'll see. We're going to get the stuff shipped down to Mexico, and then we'll be able to distribute from there. And I will invite, I'll put together a little package. You can come down and help me distribute the stuff and see what your good works are doing. Anyway, you can get in on that raffle. 20 bucks a ticket for this Talica 20. You can buy them there at the event on Sunday. You can buy them in the restaurant before 2 o'clock because at 2 p.m. we are drawing the winner. Or... Send me a text and we'll get you in the raffle. That is 657-227-6459. All right, Bluefin Tuna down in San Diego. I have no doubt that that stuff is going to continue to bite. I talked to an angler at Sam's place yesterday who had been fishing it on a private boat, and he said it has just been incredible. You know, it's only 17 miles from the corral in Ensenada until you're in Bluefin heaven. Man, is that close. And from San Diego... Of course, about a 60-mile run down the coast. It's been really outstanding. The boys are back on it. 
once again. You run into different grades of fish and diversifying your tackle is super, super important. Remember that so you'll run into that 20, 25 pound fish, 40, 50 pound fish, and then 100 pound fish, 200 pound fish. It's amazing the different grades of fish that you could encounter, but there's enough of that big fish around where I wouldn't send you down that way without a two speed uh, with 80 pound. You gotta have that. Then you've gotta have something to fish that 30 to 40 pound. You wanna have some great fluorocarbon like Opsin Fluorocarbon, www.opsinusa.com. Put FA, Friedman Adventures, in a checkout for a free gift and a note from Greg. That is super important. Choosing a good hot bait, all of those things work. And of course, fishing lures has been so effective. Like that 100 gram to 300 gram size lure. Sam's got a bunch of them right here at Big Fish Bait and Tackle. They just got a ton. And also, you can get lured up at those places and man that has been such an effective way to get the job done the night bite probably not probably it has been by far the best it's really been on fire great fishing at night and some guys are suggesting that you just kind of take it easy during the daytime and get ready for the night bite i know me i like my sleep at night so that's a difficult one for me but with those giant bluefin tuna, not that difficult to get motivated and get out there. Those 6 a.m. boats like the San Diego, the Grande, the Liberty, the Malahini, a lot of those boys are out today and they have been getting in on this bite. I mean, there has been some absolutely spectacular bites for some of those guys. The fact that you can have a shot at a 200 pound tuna on a trip that leaves the docks at 6 a.m. is still mind boggling to me. We're so blessed to get in on that. So I suspect we're gonna see some good catches here and it should continue as long as that wind gives us a break. And what a pain in the neck this wind has been. I mean, this just belies all the wind we've had. It is absolutely gorgeous here this morning. Couldn't be any more lovely. Let's hope that it keeps going. You know, the guy that I talked to over there at Island Fishing Tackle, and I'm sorry I forgot his name, Hopefully he'll watch and put up a comment in uh, on YouTube. But um, he told me that he saw those bluefin feeding on krill. He watched that happening. And according to him, and I wonder if anybody out there has this similar experience, he said that the fish, when he eats it now, the bluefin, after it's been feeding on that krill, he thought it tasted much better, much cleaner. So I don't know if this guy uh, is imagining things. I hope not. Uh, or you've had a similar experience. It would be interesting to hear some of your comments. Leave a comment there on YouTube. That would be great. All right, Coronado Islands, hopefully that's going to get going again. There's been some yellows around the entire area. I mean, up there at North Island in the middle, down to south, down south, Kelp Ridge, into the pile. There's been some yellows around there and Calico Bass and that kind of thing. Should be some Barracuda moving in there shortly. But of course, the wind has kind of deteriorated conditions and it may take a little while. Sometimes it bounces right back. So, of course, we're watching it closely for you, but a lot of times it takes a while. Some solar warming, water to clean up, and then we'll get back on the bite. Looking at the coastal regions from Ensenada up to the Channel Islands, there's been a smattering of barracuda. It's been mostly sculping and rockfish and that kind of thing. Up there out of Marina del Rey, they're still catching, having days of some nice bass fishing when they don't have it. Of course, they are bouncing back to some good rock fishing. Same thing there in Redondo and all that Bay Area is pretty good. And when I say good bass fishing, I definitely am not talking about limits of bass, but some nice sand bass and stuff like that. You know, my friend Valentino, he goes by here every day. Such a hardworking guy from Oaxaca. Buenos dias! So I always have to say hello. I hope you don't mind me butting in for that. All right, so coast, mostly rock fish, that kind of thing and we'll keep our eyes on it. Hopefully some gar are gonna move in here really, really soon. We need some barracuda, something exciting to really get everybody going. All right, taking a look at some of the local islands. Tino Valentine, he's out there. Well, at least I heard he was leaving last night. I hope he's out there on board the Freedom out of our home 22nd Street landing in San Pedro. Um, hopefully he's gonna find some fish. It's been blowing out there consistently for a while. We'll see what conditions look like could be a problem but if anybody's going to find fish it'll be tino be in the past he's been able to exploit 
some squid nests and fishing those areas. He's come up with some really good halibut fishing as well as some yellowtail and some white sea bass. So hopefully that's going to come together. And most of the time, although he's had a few difficulties, but most of the time he's able to fill up with rockfish. Also, sea lions have been a pain in the neck out there also. So we'll keep our eyes on it. Santa Barbara Island, we continue to see some really excellent fishing out there. At times, again, conditions, that's the question. Wind does have a great tendency. In fact, most of the time it happens that conditions deteriorate and surface fish don't like to bite that much in it. So we'll watch that very, very closely for you all and see if SBI will start kicking out halibut and yellows and sea bass. Once again, continue to monitor that for you. And Catalina pursuits getting back out there. You know, that island also suffering from conditions that are not perfect but we have seen quite a bit of yellowtail there. I'm very enthused, freelance, pursuit. Other guys have been picking off a few yellows, no huge scores, some barracuda, a little bit of calico bass, a lot of shorts, but it just seems like the island is saying, can you please give us a little break? Can you turn the fan off? And we're ready to bite, so we'll watch that very closely. The wind up there in the Channel Islands has been an A1 pain in the you know what. It's been brutal up there. Some of the guys tried to get out and make something happen yesterday, but it didn't happen. However, looks like we've got a little window opportunity this weekend. I know the Island Spirit out of Ventura Sport Fishing will be out there looking around, and so will many of the overnight boats. Endeavor, Ventura Sport Fishing, Aloha Spirit, many of the other guys should get out there to give it a shot. And I think the Cobra and a few other boats are out also again today. So hopefully they're going to get back on track because there's such a great signal up there for white sea bass. I mean, it is really, really good right now. And hopefully we're going to get some good weather and get back out. Those sea bass up there, yeah, there's been that 20 to 40 pound fish, but there's been fish in the 60 pound mark. And fingers crossed that we're going to be able to come up with a catch of sea bass or yellows or halibut. And of course, copious amounts of rockfish are always in the mix up there in the great Channel Islands. All right. I was mandated to talk surf fishing, and the only reason I haven't been talking about it is because I'm an old guy and I forget sometimes. I apologize. Surf fishing, look at I mean, it's perfect. One thing I will tell you right now is that a couple of things are colliding right now that are perfect for this weekend, and that is the high tide with the sunrise, and also the high tide with the sunset. Those are magical times, sunrise and sunset. Fish just like to bite. Sometimes the tide is not even of consequence. But when you get those to line up and you get this kind of weather, guaranteed you're going to get a bite. And when I say sunrise, if you look on your weather app or you look whatever and it says sunrise is 6 a.m., first light is about a half hour before that. That's when you want to be there fishing. So you want to get down there about 15 minutes before that. So 45 minutes ahead of time get a bait in the water and sunrise with the high tide and nice weather, all magical. I love the sandworms. You can dig them up yourself. Ghost shrimp work really, really well. You can also fish artificials like lucky crabs, crocodiles. That should all work pretty well. I was down here the last time and had a pretty good bite on the rays, butterfly rays and those dumb round stingrays. Curse of civilization. Man, those things are so small. But when they get you, and I've been stuck many times, uh, it hurts like hell. So be careful. You can do the stingray shuffle where you don't lift your foot up. You actually just shuffle along the beach, but they'll still get you. I've had them get me that way also. So be careful with those round stingrays. There's been quite a bit of Corvina, though, in the real shallow area. So that's something you want to fish. Fluorocarbon is a way to do that. Light line, they're wily critters. Corvina have a tendency to just kind of cruise along the beach. They're looking for sand crabs. They're looking for mussel, whatever it is they want to feed on. And so if you see them, take a run up ahead of them and then toss your bait right in front of their nose about six feet so they actually swim right into your bait. And that works like a charm. Should be some more yellowfin croaker. Should be some more halibut. It looks pretty darn good to me. And remember, sunrise and sunset, it is absolutely perfect right now. Grunion run on the horizon on May the 16th, and that always is an attractant, a magnet. It's going to bring a lot of game fish into these beaches, and that happens ahead of time. So 
keep your eyes on that. And by that, I mean those fish start to stage, the grunions start to stage a few days ahead of time and fish are more active, starting to move up on the beach. So when you look out there, you see those waves break, like this wave is gonna break right now. And then the wave that's farther out there, that is gonna dislodge all kinds of critters like sandworms and sand crabs and even mussels and clams. So those fish actually, surf fish, like to stage right behind where that wave is breaking. And then when it breaks, they swim in and start looking around for whatever has been dislodged in the surf. So when you're throwing a lure, you know exactly what to do. You want to be coming through that area and further out in this with a lure is better. But right when that wave breaks, you're behind it with your cast and then you're coming through that where those fish have staged up behind it and they're moving in to feed on it. All right, we're going to give away a Talica 20 on Sunday at Shoals in Long Beach. I hope you can make the casting event. If you can't, meet us over at Shoals. We'll be over there. I'll be there until 2 o'clock. We'll draw the winner, and then I am off to another event. But I'll be there from 11.30 to 2 at Shoals and looking forward to it. Chef Jason just put up a calico bass cooking video that's another winner, and I think we're going to have another one a little bit later today. All right, everybody, take great care. It's an absolutely gorgeous morning. I can't thank you enough for spending your coffee break or your morning with me with a cup of coffee, cup of tea, or whatever it is you're sipping on. And don't forget, I've got those tokens for Shoal, so hit me up when you see me down there at the park. Take care, my friends. Have a wonderful day, and I appreciate you spending some time with me this lovely Friday morning.